Welcome back to our channel today. We are having a cozy spring, slow living day. We will be bringing you along harvesting rhubarb at my parents' garden and baking a rhubarb upside down cake with my daughter. Stay to the end and I'll share more rhubarb recipes with you. I have rhubarb planted at our little cottage in town. It's the first thing I do when I move to any new spot. I bring my rhubarb starts with me. However, they are small and not ready to harvest. So off we go to my mom and dad's garden. I have to say I love rhubarb and how easy it is to grow and flourish, especially well in cold climates. My mom's rhubarb looks absolutely prehistoric. It's so big. Manuring and mulching every year really helps rhubarb grow to its full potential. My parents' gardens and waterfall are a labor of love they have been working on for many years. I could look at flowers all day. I have had a love for plants and flowers since I was very young. They speak to my heart. My dad hauled all the rocks off the mountain behind their house for the backyard waterfall. It brings in so many beautiful birds and animals. They've even had a moose come up to drink in the water during the winter.
When we got home, Natasha, my daughter, who is usually behind the camera, decided to make her gluten-free rhubarb upside down cake. She's gluten intolerant and she's an amazing baker and has taken many of my recipes and converted them to gluten-free recipes. This recipe is out of my cookbook, Cozy Christmas Baking. I'll link that below in the description box. It's for a cranberry upside down cake and she has altered it to a gluten-free rhubarb cake. I honestly cannot even tell the difference. It is so good. I find that baking for me and my family is a very grounding, creative outlet. I know not everyone is into baking, but for us it's a very intentional, slow living practice that we enjoy and always leads to having a lovely afternoon tea time. Rhubarb is a native of Siberia. It likes cold, water, and nitrogen, often called the pie plant. Widespread consumption of rhubarb stalks began in Britain in the early 19th century. People often ask, is rhubarb bad for you? The leaves are poisonous, but the stalks are fine for eating. One thing I really enjoyed in uh, Laura Ingalls Wilder book, The First Four Years, was when she was a new cook uh, in her new home, uh, her early years of being married, she had to cook for uh, all the farmers that came over that were helping with their fields. And she had forgotten to put sugar in the pie plant, pies, which was rhubarb. And the, one of the farmers um, that came, I think they call them threshers actually, but they took a bite of the pie and it was super sour and they nicely took the sugar bowl and poured sugar onto the pie. And she was mortified that she forgot to put in the sugar. So that's another thing. Rhubarb definitely needs to have a sweetener of some sort because it is very, very tart. And if you would like to read that, you should definitely look into reading Laura's books. I think that one was the first four years.
I found a little article on the Land Lakes website, and I will put that article in the link descriptions below. Is rhubarb a vegetable or a fruit? That is the question. Basically, rhubarb is a vegetable, but most people consider it a fruit. In fact, in 1947, a New York court decided that since Americans primarily use it as a fruit, it would be considered a fruit for the purposes of regulations and duties. Rhubarb makes the best jam, bread, and desserts. I have several recipes on my blog, ForgottenWeFarms.com. I'll leave the links in the description below. Now for some tea time and lovely dessert.
Thank you so much for joining us on this Slow Living Day vlog. I hope you have a wonderful day, my friends.